This is Akashwani. Yog is something that can change, enhance and add value to the life of each and every person who takes it up. In our English Talks Chunk tonight, we are bringing to you experiences of Garima Dutt, who is a faculty in Delhi University, in the School of Communication and an avid practitioner of yog for lifestyle management. She speaks about her personal experiences in the talk entitled Yog to Strengthen Mind and Body. Over to Ms. Garima Dutt. Yoga is a holistic practice that promotes the well-being of both the mind and the body. Yoga's origins can be traced to India over 5,000 years ago. The word yoga or yog was first mentioned in ancient sacred texts called the Rig Veda. Yoga is among the six schools of philosophy in Hinduism and it is also a major part of Buddhism and its meditation practices. It is believed that there are 19 types of yoga and about 66 basic yoga postures. Having said that, yoga is something which is not learnt in a day. It is a long-term solution that combines asanas, the physical postures, pranayam or breath work or breathing exercises, dhyana, meditation and mindfulness to create a harmonious balance. It combines gracefully executed movements with focus on one's breath containing elements of listening to your body, self-awareness as we call it, so you execute these gentle, flowing, but not forced movements. And this is why a lot of practitioners call yoga movement with meditation. Because it eases you in this meditative state. It is a sort of a shift of consciousness over time, which you experience while doing asanas along with focusing on your breath, which in turn eases tension, creates awareness and calms the mind. The movement done mindfully elevates you to a state of higher consciousness. So with time and practice, you establish a connect between your breath and movements and you relax your mind, body and soul. Yoga as a practice, I believe, holds promise and possibility for each one of us. Whatever be your focus to begin with, you could start with a focus on physical fitness, while someone else may want to practice yoga for mental clarity and focus. The good part is you end up achieving all of it. And slowly, each one of us can get there. And here are some of the ways in which yoga can contribute to a healthy mind and body. I think yoga is a great way to achieve physical fitness. Yoga asanas, the postures, they help us improve flexibility, strength and balance. And if you're consistent, regular practice can enhance muscular endurance, improve your mental health, cardiovascular health and increase your overall physical fitness. Yoga is incorporated in many routines today, many exercises today for its stress reduction benefits. Yoga has deep breathing techniques and relaxation exercises that activate the body's relaxation response. This helps in reducing stress levels, lowers blood pressure and promotes a sense of calmness. When you combine physical movement, breath control and meditation, it helps you clear the mind. It gives you increased mental clarity, improved concentration and focus. Hence, if you are someone who is into a high stress job, yoga can be very beneficial for productivity, decision making and overall cognitive function. Yoga is also very, very beneficial for emotional well-being. It encourages self-awareness introspection, reflection. It allows individuals to connect with their emotions. And regular practice can help you manage and regulate your emotions, reduce anxiety, depression, and promote an overall positive outlook towards life. Yoga can also help you regulate your sleep and wake-up cycles. It can help improve your quality of sleep. If you continue to do yoga regularly, you will find that your stress levels have reduced. You feel this boost of energy. You feel less fatigued throughout the day and there is a general sense of vitality. With age, our muscles need flexibility. We need to improve flexibility and there's a range of motions that we need to do. And yoga is very beneficial for our health and the health of our joints. It reduces the risk of injuries. Yoga also cultivates a sense of mindfulness. So it is important to see that for however less time you can, you should get connected to yoga at least once during the day. It can help you achieve a general sense of joy and contentment in life. 
I would like to stress on this fact that yoga is a very personal practice and it is advisable that you learn it from a qualified instructor to ensure that you learn proper alignment, proper breath work and techniques. Speaking of my personal experience, my trust with yoga began quite early in life, during my school years. We had weekly yoga with our teacher and perhaps at that time we did not understand the importance of it all. But as an athlete, I realized quickly the benefits I accrued through practicing yoga. My break from yoga happened during my college days and then as I began working in the corporate world. But it was not until I started experiencing issues with my lower back owing to long hours at work and then driving from work to home and from home to work that I got back to yoga. I started working with a teacher and gently got into regular practice. Yoga has been very beneficial for relieving my back pain. It strengthened my muscles that support the spine. It helped me correct my posture, which could have been the reason and is the reason for a lot of back ailments. And it promoted an overall relaxation. It was a joy to get back to it after so many years. I would like to again stress that it is important that not all yoga poses are suitable for everyone, especially if you suffer from back pain, because the cause of back pain may vary. It is always a good idea to consult a healthcare professional before starting any new exercise program, especially if you have chronic or severe back pain. That being said, here are some poses that are generally considered helpful for curing back pain and they help me cure my back problems. The cat-cow pose, the marjari asana and bital asana, the bal asana, also known as the child's pose, the adho mukswan asana, the downward facing dog, the setu bandhasana, the bridge pose, the salamb bhujangasana, the sphinx pose, all these poses are recommended when you have back ailments. Please remember it is crucial that you listen to your body and never force yourself into a pose that causes you pain or discomfort. I used to do that quite a lot. My whole idea would be that I should be able to get through a particular asana. I was advised not to do that. So please consult a proper healthcare professional or a qualified yoga instructor for personalized guidance. It's been six years now and my back is in much better shape. My posture is better than ever and I do feel that the pro tip here is that you continue with your practice and avoid long breaks from yoga. Then came my pregnancy. After I got married, I also did yoga for a lot of relaxation during my pregnancy and I was diagnosed with preeclampsia, a condition in pregnancy characterized by high blood pressure. And during this time, I could not do vigorous practice. But I continued with certain asanas which are very good for managing BP, high blood pressure or hypertension as we call it. Trikonasana, Bhadrasana, cat-cow pose as I mentioned earlier, the Parvatasana, the Shavasana. These helped me during my pregnancy as well. And I took a lot of safety measures and consulted before taking up yoga during my pregnancy. Post-pregnancy, my high BP has stayed with me. Yoga, in my case, has been very effective for reducing and managing high blood pressure. Although it is known that it may not necessarily cure the BP condition. Hypertension is complex. It is a complex medical condition. It requires a comprehensive approach. It requires lifestyle changes, medication, regular monitoring. But yoga has certainly contributed to the management of my high blood pressure. It has helped me reduce stress. I have incorporated a lot more breathing exercises, meditation and relaxation techniques in my yoga classes and that have helped me reduce my stress levels. Apart from dhyana and pranayama, you have a lot of exercises that can help you. Gentle stretching, strengthening, balancing movements that can help you ease your blood pressure. Exercises and postures that can help improve blood circulation and weight management, which is very essential in BP. So there are potential benefits of yoga if you want to manage lifestyle and manage diseases like hypertension. I would say yoga is a practice for everyone. There is something in it for everyone. We all should go back to our roots, go back to yoga, or if we have never taken a yoga class, you should go get it. You should take one today. Yoga to strengthen mind and body. You just heard this talk by Ms. Garima Dutt. Talks in English are aired every Tuesday on the same frequency at 10.10pm. 10, 10 Don't miss out on the coming Tuesday. Until then, is goodbye and happy listening.